repair and install because the automation is still running. So, um, let me uh, start that over. This is a, a big problem with Metal Live Studio, not so much because we layer all the guitars and we overdub harmonies and we overdub solos and stuff, but this becomes a problem live, all right? So you hear him coming out of the left speaker. Well, listen on my headphones, it's not a big deal. It's a big deal when you're at a, a concert at a show, all right? So I'll stop it there. It's a big deal there. So you get, if you pan, hard pan the guitars, you get this giant, oh! Oh, yeah, and then when somebody stops, like Ben stops and plays over there on one side, and you may be on the audience on the left side of the left PA, and you're like, well, I don't hear that too much. And then Pete plays a solo, and if you're on the left side, you hear that, but no Ben. And so there's sound inconsistencies all around because we have to worry about a larger uh, footprint for our sound system. So what do most live engineers do? They don't pan the guitars. They run them straight up the middle and crank them way up. Okay, that's how they solve that. That's the quick, easy fix. Is it does it give you the huge sound that you want? No. Now, sometimes um, I won't hard pan the guitars. I'll pan them a little bit because I got a lot of stage volume, but I'll send them through a tripling effect to create a stereo image, just this extra wall of stuff. And I'll run second channels, whether it's a second mic or I clone the channel. Uh, the mic to a second digital channel on the console and set it up just for guitar solo so I can just push a fader up when they play and now they're they're being heard and things like that. Um, these guys are, especially Pete, is easier to deal with on average about guitar solo tone because Pete at his heart, he is a, he's a guitar soloist. He's a lead guitar player at his, at his core. And so his tone and his amp is more suited to that. Um, ben doesn't do as, as much stuff, so his tone is a little bit more suited to rhythm stuff. So I was with these guys in the studio. I would have each guy play twice, um, maybe even have them switch amps and stuff and play and just get a, a nice wall there before we start moving in the solos. So what I'm going to do is simulate um, overdubbing in the studios, and that's where the third mic comes into play. And what's going on here? As I'm going to solo this micro, and I'm going to go ahead and start turning on the automation again. Let me get closer with the. Uh... This is an aggressive EQ, all right? So. Basically, like every other EQ, I did that while the whole mix was running. I just want to punch up certain parts of the sound, uh, high and low pass filtering out a lot of the highs and lows there. Now I am using compression for solos. And on top of that, I'm using the, the rider here to help. So it made the automation easier. Pretty cool. So that one's how that works, and I'll go ahead and turn on Ben's stuff as well. Okay. We got one more solo here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the uh, send to just basically, um, you know, a, a bouncy echo here. And those, those levels do get automated here as far as uh, Pete's solo here. See that? And then it's going to hit the last note there. And it gets cut off there. That is actually an edit between two songs right there. So I used uh, guitar solos and long echo uh, to hide that. There's an extra long read in there. So. Pretty cool, and then I'll let you hear one more solo where I bumped up that echo to catch that little pinch harmonic at the end. And little, this is it, my automation is pretty simple here. All right, 
So now it's back on the rhythm mic. So that was the 609 there. Okay, well, let's hear that with the whole mix there. Now Pete's coming up the center. Hey, that's cool, but Ben is still off to one side only. And let me go ahead and I do have the, uh, the, I do use all stem plugins here. So let's hear it with that on there. Not a whole aggressive on it, but. Well, why don't you uh, center Ben there and make him come mono? All right, let's see what that sounds like. Just pan them out. That's weird. Those are two different mics. Right. This is the secret I'm going to show you, and you can do this live to some degree. So, coming back to the rhythm guitars, I am going to send the rhythm guitars to, in this case, it's called Doubler 2 in the Waves plugin. Uh, Yamaha, we'll call it pitch tune, dual pitch inside of an M32, or whatever. What's going on here? is that the aux sends for the guitars are post pan, okay? So that's post pan, meaning your pans will affect the fact that it's a stereo send. So Ben's panned all the way to the right, which means Ben's comes down voice number two. Pete is panned all the way to the left, so his guitar comes down voice number one. There's slight different pitching on each one to kind of mimic human error from layering. But they're both set to the same delay time. And if I look up here in a little graphic here, you see that red voice there? That's been flipped. That is returning outside uh, on the right side. So here's Pete. Well, let me do Ben here because Ben's going to keep playing rhythm. All right. In fact, let me... I want you guys to hear this all the way back here. All right. You see the output's coming on the right side. In fact, when I look at the guitar stem, notice that the output of the delay is six decibels less than the um, than the main guitar. And same with Ben, vice versa here. So it's a six decibel volume on each side. So when I add it in there, it's not overbearing, um, but it just adds a little bit of thickness to it. But see, that's not the real reason why it's there. The real reason why it's there is that when Pete plays a guitar solo, all right, what's going to happen down here on Ben's tracks is that level to that doubling effect is going to kick up. Like I said, there was a 6 dB difference. It's going to kick up and even it out, okay? So we got all that going. I'm gonna just do the rhythm guitars here. So here comes Pete's lead. We're gonna lose Pete's guitar though. Cause he's playing solo and I don't, we're not listening to that right now. I do mute the effect for things like this. That's now all Ben's guitars. Here you still have imaging. And we're back again. Now I'm gonna turn on the solo stem and he's gonna go into the solo here. together we'll go to the third solo Are 
effect there. Pretty cool, huh? And that's how that is done. Can I do this live? Uh, yeah, even on a Behringer X32, it's um, it's in the automation section. It would actually, in a Behringer or Midas M32, be called the snippets is what I would use instead of the full-blown scenes. And I've, I've done this before, actually, uh, with a variant of this band called Equinox. Uh, different drummer and a couple of different members, but the core members are the same. Uh, same deals, two guitar players, um, and then just push the buttons. And when I, I do teach this stuff for a living, and uh, that's one of my class demos is I put them out on a big uh, Avid S6 out in our main hall, and I pipe this session in multi-track into the S6, and I've written several scenes with this exact same song, and I just push the buttons, and the same thing happens over to PA. Granted, it doesn't take into account stage volume issues and things like that, but it's something that can be done if you're in the right situation. you got some time to figure things out. Uh, your stage volumes are low. Like a lot of guys are now are like using Kempers and stuff. Um, and you can do a lot of things actually from the Kempers themselves like this. Um, I know Meshuggahs have done it from Meshuggahs done it from their Axe Effects. Uh, if you watch some of their live stuff in later years, you're like, wow, that's, all the guitars still sound in stereo and rhythm while he's playing a lead. They're doing it from the Axe Effects. So they did it all on the front end, basically. But it can be done. All right. So that's the whole point here. And that's why I'm sharing these videos here. And I am going to play the last section of this song, which is just, just completely awesome, man. honestly, here. Let me see if I can't find it here. And like I says, I do uh, mute the effect, um, the tripling effect down here. When he, anybody, which has normally been when they pause and they do little uh, little breaks here. I do leave Pete's mics open because there's sometimes people going woohoo and it's kind of fun for a live show. So Ben's gonna play his solo. He's gonna do a big whammy bar dive bomb. I'm gonna mute the effect because of the way the guys are playing rhythm guitars, you'll hear it. And then it's gonna move into another part. It's really good. Here in a second. 
So I'm doing that with a bass just for this part. And all the guitar mics are lit. I have to be careful on pushing too much of the lead mics because they're going to jump on top of his vocals or right in that same range. So the guitar solo mics are in the same um, frequency range as the vocals, so when the vocals are out and they start playing solos, it kind of puts, you know, you take that piece out, you put it in with something else. So. And then this is the ending of the song. I'll let the end of the song go ahead. Um, and then the audience mics open up there. And he says some babble and that's it. Pretty cool. And that's you know, Tony. So that will, we're gonna let that man. one. We're gonna let that one yeah. go there as it fades Welcome out. Man, um, right? And that's pretty cool. So I'll put my mic back there so we can hear my mic again. But um, I hope this answered some questions and some people that wanted to see this stuff. Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, <clears throat> I'll check my page if anyone has any questions um, about things. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, it may take me a couple days to get back at you, but I do answer questions. I always do that. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. All right. So, uh, I don't know. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Two metal. Yeah.